Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, so let's start today's discussion. Uh, cost allocation and joint product and byproducts. So the main idea uh, behind this chapter is that when uh, the manufacturers or producers are producing uh, two or more products together, so there are certain uh, costs which are joint costs, like they buying a raw material together for both the products or more than two products. And then later on, this split off at a point, then the products are very different. And then we can also uh, uh, allocate some cost or uh, have a, some cost on uh, which we call it as a separable cost. So the main idea is that how we can charge the joint cost among the products. And uh, related to that topic also that sometimes when we produce goods, uh, we have a byproduct as well. So what we are going to treat uh, the cost or the revenue we generate from the byproduct. So this is the main idea of this uh, uh, topic. Let's start uh, with the. OK, so <clears throat> cost allocation, joint products and byproducts. That's our uh, topic for the seventh uh, session. Uh, what are the learning objectives uh, from this chapter? Uh, distinguish among uh, different types of uh, saleable product, scrap and toxic waste. So there are uh, these the main product or main products. Uh, then we have a scrap uh, because of the uh, defects in our product or there's a byproduct uh, which can be a toxic or which can be a non toxic or which can be have a saleable value which cannot be have a saleable value. So these are the things. Analyze the physical measure. Now, when we want to uh, distribute the joint cost among the products, uh, there are uh, different methods we can apply. The one of the method is a physical measure method, like how many kilograms, how many meters, how many uh, uh, in, in, in ways that uh, we can uh, distribute the cost uh, by physically measuring or using a unit uh, that is uh, possible in case of uh, many uh, raw materials. Uh, and then we can also uh, use a sale value, sales value at split off method to allocate joint cost. Uh, but there are other methods as well. So these are two methods like sale value at split off. That's a method or it's a method that physically we can count. Or apply and the, there are two more methods and those are more uh, technical or uh, th those are uh, methods which in which we apply uh, more uh, accounting analyze two methods to use when there is no sale value at the split off point so if there is no possible that we can uh, assess the saleable value of this uh, semi finished or uh, in process uh, product so then uh, this method uh, sale value at uh, split off is not usable or not uh, possible, then we have to use uh, the other methods which we call it as NPV and uh, so identify and strategic implication of a decision to implement one joint cost allocation method. So it is important from the management point of view that which method we are using because each method has a different calculations and increase or decrease the cost of a product and definitely that is going to increase or decrease the gross margin uh, or a uh, <clears throat> Uh, gross margin percentage uh, per unit for each product. So account by product using two different methods, and this is what we call it as a uh, NPB. And uh, so we're going to discuss in detail. Now before going into. So um, before going into uh, the, these particular methods, how do we apply? Uh, we're going to go over the uh, simple examples of those. Uh, uh, methods. Uh, we want to learn some terminologies which we're going to use in this particular chapter. So uh, one uh, definition which we uh, uh, understand is joint cost. Cost of a single production process that yield multiple products. So before going into a uh, identifiable uh, different uh, products, uh, the products are in the process and that process, uh, whatever the cost we incur for that process is called as a joint cost. Uh, then there is a split off point, the point at which the, the products can be identifiable or that can be a separate and we can uh, charge the cost after that point separately on those products. Uh, so the, the place in a joint production process where two or more products become spare, separately identifiable. So sparable cost, sparable cost, the cost after split off, after split off, 
whatever the cost we incur, this is sparable because that, then after that, uh, the products are identifiable. So that's a sparable cost. Uh, all cost incurred beyond the split of point that has an assignable to one or more individual product. Now, what is product itself? Any output, what, how we define the product and how we define the waste, how we define the byproduct. So that's the, the, that's the way that we have to define the product. Any output with a positive saleable value. So that's important to note that it should have a positive saleable value. So sure. one requirement or any output use uh, internally that enables a firm to uh, avoid incurring costs. So maybe that's uh, internal use. We process further so that becomes the internal uh, use of that product. So this is also considered to be a product. Now the important point here is that uh, positive saleable value. So sometimes the byproducts are also have a uh, positive saleable value. But in that case, what we have to see that which one is a product and which one is a byproduct, uh, the, the high value, that's a, so categories of a joint process output, output with a positive saleable value and output with a zero saleable value, or uh, sometimes it can be a negative saleable value because we have to treat that byproduct. When we treat it uh, before uh, dumping into the river or sea uh, or in the uh, soil, uh, what we need, we need to process and that cost is called as a uh, output with a negative saleable value. Now joint products, uh, output of a joint production process that yield two or more products with a high sale value. That's the point which I raised, high sale value compared to the sale value of any other output, uh, which can be a byproduct. As well. So, but are not separ uh, separately identifiable as an individual product until after the split off point. So that's what we call it as a joint product. Main product, uh, out output of a joint production process that yield one product with a high sale value compared to the value of the other products. So like uh, soap industry, uh, they produce uh, soap, uh, but at the same time they are able to produce glycerin. Now this glycerin is a byproduct, but as compared to the prices of these soap uh, or uh, these, uh, the glycerin's values are very low. Uh, same is the case with the, <clears throat> you know, uh, this oil, what we extract from crude oil, what we extract from the, uh, earth uh, is a is a product of a many many different products, but the main product is a gasoline or a diesel, uh, and the rest of the products are uh, important, uh, like wax and all these things, uh, or mobile oil or grease. So these are all byproducts, but they have a saleable value. But comparative to the gasoline or a diesel, these, these the values are very low. Uh, main product output, uh, but some. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's important. Uh, but for some firms, uh, these are the main products like uh, wax or uh, uh, mobile oil or all these. A main product output of a joint production process that yield one product with a high sale value compared to the value of other outputs. So byproducts output of a joint production process that have a low sale value. So that's a low sale value is considered to be a uh, uh, byproduct compared to the sales value of other outputs, the main or a joint products. So joint product, main product, byproduct, uh, scrap. Scrap is means that oh, we spoil some uh, product and that uh, has a, a minimal to zero saleable values. Toxic waste uh, has a negative revenue when the cost of a reclamation or re uh, remediation are considered cost of recovery or disposing of toxic em emissions our life cycle cost and should be added to joint production. And cost prior to allocating this cost pool to main uh, main joint or byproduct. So that's a, a toxic waste, which I said that. Now these are a few examples that we can uh, see uh, to understand this whole idea of a product, joint product, main product, byproduct, waste, scrap, all these things. So if we look at this, uh, uh, the first one, uh, the agriculture and food processing. So coca beans are the uh, input uh, we use uh, to produce. How many products we can produce? Coca butter, coca powder, coca drink mix, and uh, uh, tanning creams. So these are all the products we can generate with the only one uh, input. So a firm who is producing these all products or uh, our 
uh, two or more products out of this uh, input. So this is a joint cost if they are buying a coca beans. So lambs uh, for uh, meat purposes, lamb curds, tripe, hides, bones, fats. So these are also considered. But when uh, the slaughterhouse is producing uh, meat, uh, lamb meat, uh, their main product is lamb meat, but also they can produce a lot of these things. Uh, lumber, uh, lumber of uh, varying grades and uh, shapes uh, when they are producing uh, lumber, so they get uh, uh, sawdust or uh, also they are getting uh, wood chips, so they are selling those uh, products as a byproduct. Uh, for extractive industries, coal, we can see uh, there is a coal, uh, from coal they can uh, coke, uh, gas, uh, benzoyl, tar, uh, ammonia, so copper or copper, silver, lead, zinc, uh, petroleum, crude oil, natural gas, low, uh, raw LPG, salt, hydrogen, chlorine, uh, caustic soda. So these are all the examples that with the one uh, industry, one product, they how many products they can produce. So these are the joint uh, raw material or uh, uh, input and then the outputs are uh, many possible. So, so reasons for uh, allocating uh, joint cost, why we need to allocate the joint cost among the products, uh, because one of the requirement uh, under the uh, general accounting, uh, accepted accounting principles or a taxation purposes, uh, we have to, because uh, that some costs are chargeable, some costs are non-deductible. So there are a lot of requirements for that reason we need to uh, spare uh, or we need to allocate that cost. Computation of invent inventorable, uh, cost and cost of goods sold. So uh, when we want to calculate the profit and profit has an implication on the taxes and also uh, uh, generally accepted accounting principles. So uh, in order to get a correct profit, we need correct cost. And if we are not allocating the uh, joint cost cor uh, correctly, so then we get a uh, incorrect information regarding the uh, inventoryable uh, cost and as well as the cost of goods sold. So internal analysis of divisional profitability. So the the, the second reason that uh, we can get it is that uh, every division, every product uh, within an organization, they are, if they are dealing with many products, so they have to analyze that which product is making more profit, which product is not making more uh, less profit. So they have to compare and put uh, or use their resources accordingly. So for that reason, divisional profit among the, within the organization is also important. Uh, Cost-based contracting. So if we want to sell a product very uh, specific and want to go into a contract for uh, one product, we need to know the exact cost of that product. Uh, insurance settlements uh, sometimes uh, destroy or by fire or uh, any other uh, natural calamities or any any we we lost. Uh, so how we can claim that? Uh, what is the cost of our damage? So that's also required, like for insurance, required for rate and price regulation and litigation, uh, litigation if there is any uh, uh, legal uh, implication arise because of any reason. So we need to know the uh, actual cost of the product. So this uh, is a very uh, beautifully designed uh, diagram or a flow chart that explains that uh, the whole process of uh, what is uh, joint cost and how we can uh, produce a product one, product two, and there's a byproduct as well. So we see here that uh, we this is a fa industry or a factory. Uh, the factory is emitting uh, carbon or uh, smoke in the uh, air, and we call it as an output. This is an also an output with zero saleable value, so we cannot sell that uh, that uh, steam or uh, smoke or one, whatever we are uh, omitting in our air. Uh, and then we uh, are producing two products: product one and product two. So after getting out of this process, and this is the point where we can split off these two products. And there's a, also possibility that the uh, industry can produce byproduct, which is a sale, which has a saleable value, but very low as compared to the product. So this is the way that we can explain the whole process of. Now, as I mentioned that uh, we want to uh, allocate the joint cost to the specific product, and there are different methods and uh, there is a one way to, uh, to do this is a market-based method. Uh, market-based means that we can uh, discuss in, in, in 
uh, three different methods we apply under the market based allocation. And the third, uh, the second option is uh, as a physical measure method. So uh, uh, actually there are four methods, but we divide it in a broader categories of a market based approach uh, or the physical measure approach. Uh, so the in a market based approach, we can use sale value at split off, uh, net realizable value NRV or a, a constant loss margin percentage NRV. So that's uh, three different methods. We're going to discuss each in detail. And the fourth one is a physical measure method. So allocate tangible attributes of the product, such as kilograms, liters, or barrels, or whatever uh, we can uh, use to measure those uh, inputs. Now let's start with the uh, uh, with this uh, example or illustration. Uh, this, uh, in order to make it simple, to keep it simple, to understand the basic ideas, uh, we are uh, producing. Uh, cream and liquid skim milk uh, with the help of uh, our raw milk. So raw milk, we purchase raw milk, uh, 4,400 hectare uh, liters. In order to uh, simplify, I'm just saying liters, uh, ignoring the uh, uh, hecto uh, liters. So, uh, and the cost of this uh, raw milk is 345,000. We produce two products out of this uh, milk and one is a cream and the other one is a skim milk. So we process this milk and we get two products. One is cream. How much cream we are getting is 1000 liters, hectoliters, but uh, as I mentioned, we're going to use. And then liquid skim milk for a 3000 3, liters, right? So by this way, we have a two products, cream and skim milk. Uh, the raw material or the joint cost is uh, uh, raw milk uh, is of a 4,400 liters. Now, the cost for this uh, joint cost uh, is uh, 345. Now, with the uh, uh, further with the further uh, information is given, like there is no beginning inventory for uh, cream or skim milk. Uh, but uh, and uh, we produce 1000 uh, uh, liters of cream and 3000 liters of uh, liquid skim milk. Uh, sales, how much we is sold out of that uh, production? 800 liters of uh, uh, cream and 900 uh, liters of uh, liquid skim. So we see here uh, ending inventories, definitely 1000. Uh, sales is 800, so what is left is our ending inventory, which is 200 for cream and 2100 for liquid skin. Selling price for these two products are 155, 100, 155 for cream and two, uh, only $75 uh, per liter for liquid skin. Now, if we use the physical measure method, so liters are the a way that we can do because uh, we measure uh, milk in liters as well as cream and uh, liquid skim milks in liters. Uh, allocate joint cost on the basis of their relative proportion at the split off point. So using a common physical measure such as weight or a volume. Uh, less desirable method. Why? Because as physical allocation measure has no relationship to the revenue producing power because some products are more revenue producing power and the other one is less, uh, but we are if we are applying only physical measure method. Uh, so can be a problematic. Yeah, because some uh, inputs have a no uh, unit of measurement. So in that case, it is hard to uh, do that. Uh, but here is an example. So uh, what we do, uh, we produce 1000. So we produce 1000 liters uh, and 3000 liters. So all together is how much? 4000. Now proportionately in a physical way, 1000 divided by 4000. We get it 0.25 and 3000 divided by 4000. We get it 0.75. So this is the physical uh, Meyer way of getting proportionality. Uh, like 0 0.25, 0 0.75, or in a simple way, you can say 25% and 75%. So now we can di uh, distribute this 345,000 on the basis of 
25% to the cream and 75% to the skim milk. And when we divide this with the output like 1000, so 86 to 50 divided by 1000, so we get 86.25. And to 258, 750 divided by 3000, we get it 86.25. So we see here the cost is same. The per liter, per liter cost is same. So this is our first method. And anyway, it's just simple. It's not so uh, difficult. The second method, what we're going to use is uh, sale value at split off method. Now we know the sale value because uh, it's given like uh, the selling price at the split off is this and this. So we can uh, divide, uh, allocate, uh, use the sale value of the entire production in the accounting period to calculate uh, uh, allocation percentage. Costs are allocated to products in a proportion to their revenue generating power, consistent with the benefit received criterion of the cost allocation and ignore inventories. So in this method, we are ignoring the inventories because skim milk has a lot of invent, uh, inventory as compared to the uh, cream. So what is the saleable value? So we have uh, this much uh, of liter of cream. The saleable price is 150. We have a 3000 liters of uh, skim milk and 75 per liter. So by this way, we are able to generate this much, able to not generating able to generate this much revenue from cream and this one revenue from uh, skim milk. Now altogether this is uh, 380. So we divide 145, uh, 155, uh, 155,000 divided by 380,000. So we get it 40.79 uh, and uh, for the skim milk we get it 79.21%. So in this case, if you look uh, roughly, there are 40, 60 ratio. We have to divide this 345,000 on the basis of joint cost on the basis of this 40% and 60%. Now, when we divide this again with the 1,000 and with the 3,000, so we get it 140 for uh, cream and 68 for uh, skim milk. So you see that when we change the method, we change the method, uh, it's a it's a quite different like for cream in a physical mayor method it's just an 86.25 dollars uh, per liter but when we change it to uh, the sale uh, value at split off point method the cream price uh, cost the cost of cream is increased from uh, 86.25 to 140.72 and on the other hand, definitely uh, the the skim price, uh, the cost of script, uh, joint cost of skim milk goes down. So uh, this is also a very simple method. Just we have to calculate uh, the saleable value uh, or uh, sale values of production, uh, and that's why we are saying that we are ignoring the inventory. Although uh, we are just uh, looking at that uh, how much we can generate if we sell all. The next method uh, is uh, also very interesting, uh, but in this uh, we need uh, some calculations more. Allocate joint cost on the basis of a relative estimated net realizable value, NRV, of a total production of the joint product. So expected sales value less expected spareable cost of production and marketing of total production. So NRV, how we calculate the NRV, final sale value, minus payable cost an alternative when selling price of a one or a more products are split off do not exist so if there is a possibility that um, saleable value is not uh, available at the split off point so now we can use this net realizable value method in which what we are doing we are calculating the final sale value minus payable cost what we incurred after split off we subtract that and then we distribute it. So it's again very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so if we look at this uh, uh, information, now what we are doing, we are uh, we are using uh, the milk, raw milk, to convert it to cream and liquid skim, and then we further process these two products. Further process these two products, uh, which we are spending, and we call them as a spareable cost. Uh, that we can uh, identify 
uh, on cream, we spend further 135,000 to convert into a butter cream. And we also spend further processing $270,000 to convert the liquid skim milk into co condensed milk. And now the outputs are 800 and sorry, 800 liters of uh, buttercream and 2000 liters of uh, condensed milk, right? Now these are two costs, which is in here 135,000 and 270 is a spareable cost, right? This is a spareable cost. Now further uh, information uh, which is provided is uh, 375 is a joint cost. Uh, 135 is a buttercream spareable cost and uh, condensed milk spareable cost uh, is 270. Now production, uh, how much we produce the cream? 1000 liter uh, uh, liquid skim, 3000 liter, and then use it to produce buttercream 800 liters and condensed milk 2000 liters. Now how much we uh, sell uh, out of this? So 750 we sold uh, butter uh, cream and we sold uh, 1930 uh, condensed milk. So we have an ending inventory of 50 uh, units of uh, liters of butter cream and 70 uh, liters of condensed milk. Uh, the selling price for uh, these like 420 for butter cream per liter and 305 for condensed milk. So uh, we can convert this into uh, this table like 336 uh, revenue we can generate by selling buttercream. We see here 800 liters multiply 420, so 336, 2000 liters multiply by 305, uh, so we get it uh, 610. Now by this way, we see here this is a uh, revenue we are generating uh, like all together is 946. Uh, from these two uh, products after processing further. Now with this uh, processing further, we see here that the uh, uh, um, uh, when we uh, we learn here the method like final saleable value minus spareable cost. So we are subtracting here spareable cost, less spareable cost 135, 270. So we get it 201 and 340. That's a uh, net, net um, realizable value, net realizable value, uh, NRV. So we get it, these are the NRVs for these two products. Now these NRVs, uh, if we divide with the total NRV, so we get it a ratio, which is 37.15% and 62.85%. So joint costs allocated is, how we can allocate 345 into 37.15 and 345 into 62.85%, so we are getting this these values. And then we divide it with the uh, number of liters, like 800 here uh, and 2000 here, so we get it uh, 328.97 per liter production cost, and that's it. So this is NRV method. So, so far what we learned, one is uh, physical measure method. The second one is, uh, saleable value at split off point method. And the third one is net realizable value method. Now we just a uh, little bit uh, playing with that method uh, to modify that. I look at joint cost to joint products in a way that the overall gross margin percentage is identical for the individual product. So this is what we called as a constant gross margin percentage of NRV. So we calculate the joint NRV net realizable value or a gross margin. Uh, now this gross margin, whatever we get it percentage, we want to get the same percentage from each product. So we apply for each product and by this way we can calculate the cost we have to uh, charge to each product from the joint cost. So what we did, we uh, we calculate that, OK, if we are selling uh, 800 liters of uh, buttercream, we can generate this much revenue if we are selling uh, 2000 liters of uh, condensed milk so we can generate this much value so all together we have this much revenue and all together we have a cost like a joint cost and then spareable cost of these two products so we get it 470 uh, 750 and by this way we have a this much gross margin uh, when we divide this gross margin with the uh, 
revenue with the total revenue with the total revenue we get it uh, gross margin percentage how much we are getting yes now when we uh, divide this mm, gross margin uh, with the so we get it 20.715 so we want that 21 7.5 uh, 719 should be from each product so how we can do this we uh, get the sales value from each product and then we apply less gross margins that we apply that how much gross margins we want 20 percent 20.719 20 from each revenue and we deduct it so the remaining amount is our cost it should be our cost so the total product cost and the uh, sum of these two is 750 so how we can divide this less uh, we can uh, subtract the less uh, spareable cost which is 135 and two uh, 270 so when we subtract we get it this way that's the amount we're going to charge to uh, the uh, each product like buttercream and condensed so constant uh, gross margin uh, as a percentage of nrv method example so we see here uh, <clears throat> that here we are charging cost uh, 128 179 but here we calculate to 131 385 uh, and in a constant method, we are charging 86,250. So it's a quite different. Uh, it depends on the method what we are using for that. Uh, let's uh, move to the next method. Uh, uh, no, that's that's the three methods what we're going to discuss. Uh, so if I repeat it again, in order to make it clear in your mind, one method we use and we we'll do here an example with also physical margin method. Uh, the second method, what we do is sales value at spread off method. And we calculate it. Then we calculate net realizable value method, like we apply net realizable value method. And then the fourth one, what we applied is uh, constant gross margin uh, percentage of NRV method. So we apply that as well. Now, which method is good or which method is more applicable and more appropriate? If selling price at split off is available, use the sale value at split off method. If that's possible, that's the best. If selling price at uh, split off is not available, use the NRV method. That is also good. If simplicity is the primary consideration, physical Meyer method or the constant gross margin method could be used. Despite this, some firms choose not to allocate joint cost at all. Uh, uh, now, what sell or process further? That is also a, again a question here. Uh, why it is important to see here? Question: We can sell the cream. We can sell the liquid skim milk, and we know the price that at which we can sell it. So the important question is that should we further produce, uh, further process it to make it a buttercream, or should we further process it to make a condensed milk? Now these are the questions uh, in every production process uh, can arise. And should we produce further? Uh, is it a profitable? If we produce further, our profit mark is going to increase or is going to decrease. So it's very important that we need if the product is such of a nature that we can sell it at some point and we can further process it and change into a new product and then can sell it. So this question should be answered there whether we should process further or sell it. So in sell or further process decision, uh, joint costs are irrelevant. Now, when we are making decision whether we have to uh, process further uh, or to sell, uh, joint cost is irrelevant because joint cost is already uh, done and it's uh, we call it as a sunk cost. Uh, the important thing is that the further spareable cost, what is a, a incremental? Because spareable cost is the that you have to spend it. And what is an incremental increase in the revenue? So the, these are the decisions, or what in economics we call it as a margins. Like we, what is an incremental revenue? What is an incremental cost? Then we have to make a decision. The joint cost is not a criteria, is not relevant, uh, or it is a sunk cost. So we don't need to consider that when we are making the decision of uh, process or uh, sell or for process further. Joint costs are uh, sunk cost. Don't assume all separable costs in joint cost allocations are always incremental cost. Some spareable cost may be a fixed cost. That is also possible that 
whether we do it or not, we have to incur. Uh, spareable costs are not always uh, a variable cost. It can be a fixed cost as well. Spareable costs need to be evaluated for uh, relevance individually. So here they, we see that uh, there is a uh, output uh, from this split off point. This is a split off point. And after that, we have a two products. And if we further process in two different departments, so we have a final products. So uh, we see here a uh, uh, little bit detail. Um, like if we uh, produce and sold buttercream, like here we see uh, 750 uh, liters of buttercream at 420 and sorry condensed milk of 190 because we know that there's a 50 uh, as a inventory and a 70 as an inventory so we are 9 uh, 30 liters into 305 so we see here 350,000 and 588,650 uh, this is our uh, uh, revenue uh, Produced but not sold. Uh, the, these are inventories. So we see 50 inventory. Here. So altogether, total sale uh, sales value of production is this much. Spareable cost, which is given 135 and 270. So when we subtract it, we get it like a 201 and 340. So when we add up, we see here uh, the 341. And when we subtract the joint cost uh, from this uh, onward, we get a gross margin. Uh, of 160. So the gross margin percentage uh, divided by revenues is 20.19. So in this uh, example, we say that when we process further, we get a same uh, gross margin, what we want to get it. So challenge for management accountants, market-based joint cost allocation method results in a positive operating income for all products. Uh, allocating joint cost using physical measure can result in a one or more products having a negative operating income. So physical uh, and in a simple way, we can say that physical measure method is a more rude or rudiment uh, as compared to the market based method. So implication for uh, performance evaluation managers may be reluctant to be responsible for product with a negative margin. Like if we are using a physical method and one product is having a negative uh, uh, margin. Uh, no one is uh, ready or to uh, to take those uh, responsibilities because uh, they, they are also con always considered within the organization like uh, these are the uh, cost centers. They are not generating revenue. They are uh, always a cost. Now the last point uh, we uh, want to discuss uh, in this chapter is byproduct. Uh, two methods for accounting of byproduct. One is called as a production method and the other one is called as a sales method. Uh, the treatment is a little bit different uh, in both the uh, methods. Uh, in the first method, like a production method, uh, recognize byproducts inventory as it is produced at sales and cost at the time of sale. Uh, recorded as an inventory at their selling price or at selling price less uh, normal uh, profit margins. But in a sales method, delay recognition of byproduct until they are sold Byproduct costs are not tracked separately. Byproducts inventories are not recognized. Revenue is recorded at the time of sale. So one method is that you treat the byproduct as a normal product and do all the uh, requirements uh, accounting, like uh, keeping a track of a uh, uh, cost of goods sold and as well as uh, the uh, inventory. Uh, but for a sales method, we only recognize uh, the revenue whenever we uh, sell our byproduct. So there is no inventory and all these things. So uh, here is an example uh, for uh, understanding the uh, idea of a byproduct. So uh, this is an example like uh, joint cost uh, of uh, producing timber. Uh, so we see here 1.424 million is a joint cost of timber. And after processing, we produce a very fine grade limber, uh, 4,000 uh, 4, uh, board feet, M MBF board feet. At the same time, we are also producing wood chips, uh, 700 over oven dried tons. So these are technical things. So we we just look at that we are producing tim, uh, limber number and as well as uh, the wood chip. So lumber and wood chip are the our product. So lumber is our product and wood chip is our byproduct. So uh, how much we are producing? Four thousand lumber and seven hundred uh, wood chip. Sale 
3,700 out of that. And for a uh, wood chip, we sold uh, 450 and 250 is our inventory. Uh, our price per MFB lumber per ton uh, and per chip is uh, we can see soft, uh, softwood uh, 505 and chip is 86. And uh, direct material is uh, joint manufacturing cost is 336 and overall uh, we are producing a 104. So direct material and conversion cost and this is our total cost, joint cost, joint total cost. So direct material and uh, conversion cost is this and uh, we already discussed that the uh, joint cost is 1424, 1.424 million. And we have a price for uh, softwood when we sell it, uh, and we have a price for chip when we want to sell. Now here is uh, uh, we apply both the methods uh, side by side in order to understand the uh, idea. So when we uh, sell 3,700 MBF uh, softwood at the price of 505, so we generate this much revenue, which is same for both the method. Uh, the only difference is that in a sale method, we uh, also uh, sell, you see here, uh, 450 uh, wood chip, uh, tons of wood chip. So 450 into 86, so we get it 38,700. So we also add up this revenue uh, into the revenue from the main product. So by this way, now we have a different uh, total revenues. For production method, we have a, a 1.868500. Uh, for a sales method is 1.09072. Now what we have to do for a cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold is total manufacturing cost. Uh, this is uh, 1.424. We already know this from there, 1.424 for both the methods. But what we are doing in a production method, we subtract the cost incurred for wood chip. How we can do this? 700 tons into 86. Uh, <clears throat> so we subtract this cost of uh, uh, wood chips. So in a production method, we have a revenue uh, uh, net manufacturing in cost. Uh, we get it uh, net manufacturing cost. We get it is uh, so. This is our total cost. We subtract the byproduct cost and we get it. This is our net manufacturing cost. For a sales method, we are not subtracting it because we already recognize the revenue from there. So we see here, uh, then we uh, deduct main product ending inventory. So we calculate the ending inventories uh, for both the products. So in, in this case, uh, because the costs are different, like uh, one cost is having a one three one three six three eight hundred and the other one is one four two four so we uh, apply this uh, one three six three four hundred divided by four thousand into three hundred tons so we get it this ending inventory and the other one is a uh, different ending inventory right so ending inventories are different in both the methods for main product for main product so by this way, we get it uh, cost of goods sold for both the methods and gross margins are when we subtract this cost of goods sold uh, from the revenue, what we generated, uh, we get it uh, gross margins. So gross margins are different in this gross margin. There is no revenue from the byproduct in this gross margin. We have a revenue from the byproduct, but we also have a different uh, uh, for ending inventories. Now, inventorable uh, cost uh, end of a period uh, for this method, uh, we uh, have a uh, two inventing ending inventories for production method 102285 and 21,500. Uh, that is for byproduct, but in sale method, there is no ending inventory for byproduct. We only have an ending inventory for uh, uh, main product. So this is all uh, we want to discuss uh, from this chapter. Uh, now I, in the part two, I'm gonna uh, uh, solve it a uh, one question um, related to these all methods uh, in order to make it more clear. Uh, so I hope you uh, understand this whole idea and it is interesting in my point of view, it's very interesting and to see that how we can divide the joint cost uh, towards the products uh, by using different methods uh, and we discussed so far method 
of a physical measure, method of a sale at split off, method for an naturalizable value, and the constant um, gross margin uh, naturalizable value. So these are the four methods what we discussed uh, and illustrated with an example. So if you have any question, uh, please don't hesitate to contact. 